What's good, Raider Nation? It's your boy Sanji back at it with another video. I am fired up, man. We are officially in the first week of the 2024 NFL season, and there is so many good things coming for the Las Vegas Raiders. And there's a lot of interesting reports that are also kind of coming out that we're going to get into, but I do want to first and foremost start this video right away talking about a battle that the Raiders have going into the 2024 NFL season. And it's a battle that may already have been answered. You know, Thayer Munford's probably going to start for the Las Vegas Raiders, but it's also hard to deny that DJ Glaze didn't look really, really impressive on tape. DJ Glaze played a total of 73 snaps in the preseason. And in those 73 snaps, he gave up one sack and one quarterback hurry. To me, that's really, really, really good for a young guy to essentially come in and, and be able to have that success. And the seven snaps that he played against the 49ers, that was against the first team defensive ends of the 49ers, right? And it was only seven snaps, but uh, DJ Glaze has looked really good. And there's no denying that. And for me, when I put his tape on, it looks really good, right? The way this guy's able to make contact with those defensive ends, the way he's able to stay in front of them, he's able to mirror them. You know, he's not leaning. He doesn't have issues with the footwork. DJ Glaze looks really solid for the Raiders, but you do have to also acknowledge the fact that he is a rookie. And Thayer Munford is the veteran. Thayer Munford's been around for, you know, two full seasons at this point. And uh, going into this third season, this is probably Thayer Munford's you know, either I'm the franchise tackle for the Raiders or I'm nothing more than a backup slash swing tackle that can come in. And there's nothing wrong with that, right? There, Munford was a seventh round pick for a reason. In fact, I'm not even sure if he's actually really a tackle. I, I wouldn't be surprised if at some point there, Munford doesn't jump to the inside if Dylan Parm struggles a little bit. Um, but, you know, there, Munford's interesting as well. You know, in his snaps, he played 94 snaps in preseason uh, he gave up two quarterback hits and two pressures. So he gave up, you know, he had four negative plays, essentially, uh, which isn't terrible. You know, he played 94 snaps. He played 21 more snaps than Thayer Munford did. You know, but Thayer Munford did look good as well. He definitely looked improved. But, uh, you know, if you guys are asking me, I think the Raiders just roll forward with the rookie. I, I think it makes more sense at this point because, you know, we've seen what Thayer Munford is in camp. We saw what he was in the actual preseason games, right? We saw plays where this guy was actually losing out there. There were plays where this guy wasn't able to stick on his blocks. And yeah, the quarterback got the ball out, you know, but, you know, that was preseason, right? The quarterback's not going to get the ball out as quick in the regular season. And again, if, if they're Munford's the guy for the season, that's cool too, right? But I do hope the Las Vegas Raiders keep an open mind as we get into that Chargers game. Joey Boza, Cleo Mack are lined up on the other side of the field against the Las Vegas Raiders offensive line. Now, we've also kind of heard that Andres Pete could potentially start at right guard. Uh, maybe not right away, but over time, there's a chance he can play right guard. I also think the Raiders are just kind of cross-training Pete to kind of be able to play all the different spots. Uh, you know, I think when Andres Pete first came to the Raiders, the idea was that, hey, if Colt Miller's not ready, you'll be our starting left tackle. And uh, Miller's back, thankfully. But that doesn't mean Andres Pete can't now go play left guard or right guard. Now, of course, left guard wouldn't make sense because you have Jackson Powers Johnson that will, you know, eventually take that job over if he, you know, hasn't already taken it over. But Andres Pete playing the right side of the offensive line, I think, is something you have to, you know, kind of consider. Now, right tackle might not make sense, and I think that's why he's taking snaps at right guard. I think right guard's the the, the position that he would actually take over. Um and, and I know some people, the last time I mentioned Andres Pete playing guard, you know, people are like, why are we still keeping this guy around? We should have released him, you know, when the we got down to the 53-man roster. Uh, there's a couple reasons why the Raiders first and foremost kept this guy around, right? One, Andres Pete, he's a good guard, right? He's a former Pro Bowl guard, right? And playing tackle and guard are two different positions. I know oftentimes people want to just say, hey, offensive line's all the same thing. It's actually not, you know, playing center or guard, uh, center is harder than guard, right? Because with center, you got to snap the ball. You're holding the football. You essentially have a wasted movement in snapping the football before you can actually move and get your hands on guys at guard. You know, you're in a two point stance, a three point stance, and you're free. The second the ball snapped, you're free to, you know, go make your block in that too. You're not playing in space the way an offensive tackle is. So the difference between tackle and guard, a tackle has to get out in space and he has to be able to move with guys that are running four, four, 40 yard dashes, right? Guys that are super fast. And uh, I think Andres Pete could be a really good guard for the Raiders. So I hope 
if Dylan Parham struggles, if Cody Whitehair struggles, I hope the Raiders are quickly able to kind of make that change. And then even at right tackle, if their Munford struggles, I hope the Raiders are quickly able to make that change to DJ Glaze. It's interesting because our first, you know, our, our starting offensive line out there from left tackle to right tackle, right now the expectations is uh, Colton Miller, Cody White here, Andre James, Dylan Parham, Theron Munford. And what's crazy is three of those five guys could be changed out by week five of the season, right? It's, it's kind of crazy to think that. But we'll see what ends up happening. I want to switch focus. So if you guys did not know this, the Las Vegas Raiders head coach Antonio Pierce was at the USC game yesterday. So USC LSU had a matchup yesterday. It was held in the Las Vegas Raiders stadium. Now, before we move forward, I want to tell you guys all about underdog fantasy. It is the easiest place to play fantasy sports. And then it makes watching some of these other games super interesting. All you do is pick higher or lower on your favorite player stats, and you can either 10x, 100x, maybe even 1,000x your money, depending on the multiplier. And let's talk about my personal picks for the first week of the season. So right away, Underdog's going to give you one free pick. Uh, this week, it's going to be Travis Kelsey. Essentially, all he needs to do is just have at least one yard, essentially any catch, uh, which he's definitely going to do. So you get a free pick by Underdog. Uh, let's look at some of these other picks. Let's talk about some of the picks from the Raiders game because I think there's definitely some interesting potential picks. You know, Devontae Adams has not practiced at all in training camp. To me, I'm going to take the higher on the potential for Devontae Adams to have a receiving touchdown i find it hard to believe that Devonte won't have at least one catching touchdown and uh you know which one of the cool things with underdog is if i just did the one Devonte adams pick as well as the travis kelsey free pick uh, essentially a five dollar bet twenty one dollars it's not bad but uh we're gonna multiply this we're gonna add a couple more picks so one of the things i always do is look at quarterbacks and and uh to me you know jared goff to have at least one rushing yard is it's it's kind of crazy to think, but I'm going to take the higher on it. Now, it's not guaranteed that Goff's going to have one rushing yard, but, you know, all he needs is one rushing yard. You know, he just has to run the ball one time. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and take that one right there. I'm going to make one more pick. This one's going to come from the Ravens-Chiefs game. Uh, it's interesting. I'm not sure if it'll happen, but two catches for Derrick Henry. Will, will Derrick Henry have two catches? Uh, I'm going to say he will have two catches. To me, I find it hard to believe that the, the Baltimore Ravens, keep in mind Derrick Henry, brand new scheming system, I find it hard to believe they're not going to throw him at least one or two screen passes. You know, I find that hard to believe. Uh, if he has at least one screen pass, I think we'll have at least one other play in which the quarterback will probably just throw him the ball on some sort of check down. So we'll take that one as well. $5, four picks, $80 payoff. Let's make this one happen. If you guys are interested in making your own picks or following my picks, make sure you guys use the link down in the comments below and only ever use money that you're willing to lose. Let's get right back into the video. So if you guys did not know this, the Las Vegas Raiders head coach Antonio Pierce was at the USC game yesterday. So USC LSU had a matchup yesterday. It was held in the Las Vegas Raiders stadium. Uh, what's interesting about AP being there is he wasn't the only guy there, right? The Raiders, Tom Telesco, our general manager, was also there with uh, with Antonio Pierce. And more than Tom Telesco and AP being there, the Raiders have their scouts there. And, you know, that, that's by no means, you know, that's by no means uh, something that's shocking, right? Let's just be honest. Raider scouts, you know, the whole point of being a scout is you're going to these field views, right? You're going there and you're going to look and see, you know, pre-game, you're going to kind of analyze the guys, kind of look at how they look, right? You want to be able to visibly look at some of these guys and say, hey, man, this guy looks a lot quicker. You know, he's listed at 6'6", 350, but he looks a lot quicker than that. And he looks taller and more lean than kind of what he's listed at. And uh, you want to just be able to look at guys, right, before the game starts. AP, Tom Flesco were both there. But that got people speculating a little bit, and that got people to, to essentially start to talk a little bit about a quarterback that I think is arguably going to be one of the top two or three quarterbacks taken. That's going to be Miller Moss of the USC. So Moss is very interesting because he is a redshirt junior, which means uh, he is technically in his fourth year in college. So if he graduates this year, which he should technically be able to do right in year four, if he graduates this year, he could technically go to the nfl draft if he wants and people actually be believe this guy is arguably going to be one of the best quarterbacks in this class you know i watched carson beck i watched shadur sanders 
Uh, those are the two teams that I really watched the entirety of the games. Both guys look good. They have their ups and downs. Uh, Sanders looked really good, but he also got to play at NDSU, which we don't know how good they are. Um, Carson Beck played, uh, you know, Georgia took on Clemson. Clemson's a pretty good team. Uh, Miller Moss probably had the best game when you compare the talent that he had to play against, right? He played the LSU Tigers, right? Essentially the defense of the LSU. Um, he looks good, man. Miller Moss looks really, really good. Now, the one thing you got to keep in mind is, you know, Lincoln Riley knows what he's doing as a coach, right? He knows how to produce quarterbacks. We've seen him over the years produce some of the best NFL quarterbacks. But people think Miller Moss might be one of the guys that Tom Plesko wanted to go out and actually, you know, look at and analyze, maybe talk to him a little bit. Because it's not that easy for Tom Plesko to just kind of get out there. You know, he has a real job at the end of the day, right? So some people are saying the fact that USC was in Vegas, you know, made, made Tom Plesko want to potentially go check him out a little bit. Uh, you know, it, it might not mean that. I, I don't personally think it is. You know, there's a lot of quarterbacks in this class. There's so much talent from the top to the bottom. And uh, on top of that, the Raiders have a quarterback they're invested in, in Gardner Minshew. And I think Gardner Minshew is going to surprise a lot of people. And we're going to talk about him here in a second. But, uh, you know, just to kind of wrap this up, you know, one of the interesting things for the Raiders this year is this might actually be the first draft in a long time where teams might draft quarterbacks like just keeping their pick. You know, if the Raiders have the 25th overall pick, there's a chance that maybe one team takes a quarterback before that 25th pick happens. And there's a chance you might have four or five first round quarterbacks, right? As in like quarterbacks that are calibers of being a first round pick, right? To me, it's not guaranteed that like Jalen Milroe, who played, who's a quarterback for Alabama or Cameron Ward, who looked really good for Miami. It's not guaranteed. These guys are going to be like top 10 picks, right? It's not guaranteed teams are going to trade up. We had six quarterbacks picked this past season. We had, I think, three or four the season before that, all in the first round. To me, most teams have invested in their quarterbacks. And I think for the Raiders, it's a great draft that if you even wanted to wait until the second round to get a quarterback that could be a franchise quarterback, you can actually do that this year because there's going to be a lot of good quarterbacks coming out. And that also puts the Raiders in a great spot because if Gardner Minshew has a lot of success this season, you could still draft the guy for long-term development. You know, one of the things I want the Raiders to start to consider to do is take the approach that both Andy Reid as well as the Green Bay Packers have essentially done. You know, the Packers have allowed two quarterbacks at this point to sit back, wait, and develop, and both quarterbacks have had a lot of success, right? We had Jordan Love kind of develop as well, um, and then Aaron Rodgers obviously develop as well. And uh, to me, that's the way you want to take your quarterback position and approach. And we're also seeing teams do that now, right? We're seeing some of the quarterbacks not actually win right away and teams sit them for six weeks. We're having other teams develop quarterbacks for two years, right? Like the Falcons took Michael Penix Jr. with the top 10 pick. He's going to develop behind Kirk Cousins. Cousins is locked into a four-year contract where you can really only get out of it after two or three years, right? So it's just something to kind of keep in mind. Um, but I do want to talk about our quarterback because there's a lot of reports where people are actually saying the Las Vegas Raiders quarterback situation sucks. And it's so crazy to me to think this, but like Pro Football Network, for example, is saying that the Raiders have the worst quarterback situation in the NFL. And it's so crazy for me to think this, but, you know, and maybe maybe I'm not that smart, right? Maybe my football knowledge isn't, isn't that good, right? Um, to me... Gardner Minshew is a good quarterback, right? I, I find it hard to believe that he won't be able to have success with what's around him. You know, Aiden O'Connell last year won multiple games, and he wasn't good in a lot of those games, right? He was kind of carried by the Raiders' defense. He was carried by the Raiders' receivers. And this year, our defense and receivers are a lot better than last year. Our offensive line's way better than last year, considering the guys that could essentially come in and, and, and you know, potentially take over, specifically at the both you know, both guard positions, Andres P. Jackson, Powers Johnson, those are two really, really good guards. Um, and that's going to upgrade our offensive line from last year to this year. So I don't know. It's interesting, but people are saying the Raiders quarterback situation's garbage. Um, but one of the things that Antonio Pierce actually told us in his presser like two days ago that I don't think a lot of people recognize is that Gardner Minshew is a football junkie, right? He's done a lot of things without a lot of hype. And that's starting to show up a bit. Antonio Pierce, I'm going to switch focus into this, or I want to switch into this other article. 
also said, you know, he said that we always talk about Max Crosby and Christian Wilkins about being the first guys in the building, but he's not too far behind, right? He's talking about Gardner Minshew and he stays late and he's done a lot of things without a lot of hype and things that we talk about throughout the building that's starting to show up. You know, what's crazy is when AP talked about Gardner Minshew, even in the past, you know, I'm confident two weeks ago when Antonio Pierce did his pressers, he already knew that Gardner Minshew was going to be the Raiders quarterback. Honestly, I'm pretty confident that the Raiders knew Gardner Minshew was going to be the guy probably within the first week of training camp, and they probably had some ideas coming into camp that Gardner Minshew was going to be the be the guy, right? But I think what the Raiders wanted to do was to allow Aiden O'Connor to go out there and, and potentially prove he's the guy, and I feel like he obviously was not able to do that. So, uh, you know, to me, Gardner Minshew, I think, is going to end up having success this year. You know, I was watching Gardner Minshew's tape with the Colts, and one of the things I noticed is the guy has a good arm, right? He will, and, and, and by that, I should explain what I mean by that. I don't want people to jump the gun. Gardner Minshew has a good arm based off of, you know, if you have a guy running deep and let's say a safety comes down, he's going to he's gonna take that shot deep, right? He's not going to hesitate. He can see guys deep. He's going to make those, those passes, right? He's not the type of quarterback not to throw the ball deep. He is going to stretch the field. And to me, you know, to be able to stretch the field is not something every quarterback can consistently do. I felt like one of the things with Derek Carr that we struggled with was he wasn't necessarily willing to throw the ball deep. And when I talk about deep, I'm not talking about, you know, PFF measuring 20-yard passes. 20 yards is not deep. I'm talking about passes 40, 45, 50 yards down the field, right? When ball actually travels 40 or 50 yards, which means sometimes that's like seven, that's like a 60, 70 yard pass from where the quarterback is to where the guy actually catches the ball. Um, to me, Gardner Minshew is willing to push the ball deep. And that's one of the reasons why I think, you know, Devon Adams, Jacoby Myers, Trey Tucker, I think these are going are gonna to have a phenomenal, phenomenal season this year, right? Because I think Gardner Minshew is going to throw the ball deep. And one of the things that when I watched this tape with the Colts, I don't think the Colts really had good weapons last year. I know some people will say, hey, the Colts offense is better last year than the Raiders offense this year. I totally disagree with that. I think the Raiders have a better receiver in Devontae Adams. I think we have a better tight end in Brock Bowers. We have a better second tight end than probably the Colts starting tight end in Michael Mayer. Even Jacoby Myers. You know, I would say Michael uh, 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 Pierce, uh, the wide receiver of the Colts, I would say he's a little bit better than Jacoby Myers, but it's not even a crazy gap, right? I think Jacoby Myers is pretty close. And then Trey Tucker, right, I think is legit as well. And, uh, you know, the only thing the Colts have that the Raiders don't have on the offensive side is the Colts have a good play caller, and the Raiders have a guy that's kind of unproven. And, again, I might be, you know, I might be biased or whatever, but I think the Raiders are actually going to be legit this year. I think Gardner Minshew is going to be the guy to, 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 to potentially put that together. Now, when I did watch Gardner Minshew's tape, you know, there are some games when either, you know, the, the Colts got behind and maybe he felt pressured or maybe he got hit on one play super hard and he missed the guy or whatever happened. He might come in on the next play and be willing to, like, throw a pass that it's a it's a bad decision. And uh, he did that in the preseason for the Raiders as well. So I think we all kind of already seen that. Uh, he'll have to clean that stuff up. And I, I think it will be different when you're going into a regular season game. Then when you're going into a preseason game, I think in the preseason, there's a chance, you know, because in camp, you know, in, in training camp, the Raiders quarterbacks were taking shots and doing things that they would not do in a, in a regular game. And I think that mindset kind of went into the preseason games. So the quarterbacks are throwing passes they might not otherwise throw in a regular game. So I do hope that Gardner Minshew in the regular season here against the Chargers actually makes some solid passes in his, uh, you know, he, 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 he considers the turnovers, right? He's careful with the football. He's not throwing bad passes and interceptions. Uh, but I'm excited for this game. And then finally, I want to wrap it up with the report that actually came out here uh, from The Athletic. Uh, this came out. Apparently, there's some NFL agents that talked about some of the franchises. And, you know, they got into Patrick Mahomes and how he's apparently worth $100 million per year. Like, that's the type of value he brings. But they also talked a little bit about the Raiders. And uh, I want to talk about what, some of what they said because they took a shot at Mark Davis. Uh, they said owner Mark Davis frequently makes significant changes. He put Josh McDaniels and Dave Ziegler in charge and fired them after less than two seasons. Now the Raiders have an inexperienced coach in Antonio Pierce and a retread GM hire in Tom Telesco. 
Organizations start at the top and Davis doesn't provide stability. Um, they had one other thing we'll talk about in a second, but I want to talk about this really quickly. You know, one of the things with Mark Davis was he did make a mistake in hiring Josh McDaniels and Dave Ziegler. I think with Dave Ziegler, it was pretty clear the guy struggled drafting certain positions. And I think with Josh McDaniels, he struggled not as an offensive play caller, but he struggled with, you know, having guys want to play for him. He struggled with, you know, the team building aspect of, of you know, being able to gain respect from your players. To me, Josh McDaniel struggled in that instance, but he was a good play caller. Even Devontae Adams told us that he had no issues with Josh McDaniel's play calling ability. And of course, with Dave Ziegler's inability to draft and Josh McDaniel's inability to have players kind of fired up for him, and then together they came together and picked Jimmy Garoppolo as their quarterback, you know, that right away well, kind of led to these guys getting fired. And, uh, I think the Raiders are in a much better spot now than they were under Josh McDaniels and Dave Ziegler. You know, to me, when I look at Tom Telesco, and I know some Charger fans would, would disagree with this. Uh, I know some Charger fans didn't like Tom Telesco, but you can't deny the fact that Tom Telesco drafted the, the Los Angeles Chargers. You know, Tom Telesco literally drafted these guys a franchise quarterback. He drafted these guys a franchise left tackle. He drafted these guys a good offensive line, right? Like the Chargers have a really, really good offensive line. The only offensive lineman they added from Tom Telesco's era to this year is Joe Wall. Uh, they essentially took this guy with the top top five or six pick. Uh, even on the defensive line, Joey Boza. Uh, you look at Khalil Mack. These are Tom Telesco's guys, right? These are guys that Tom Telesco drafted or brought in. To me, Tom Telesco's done a good job, and he's essentially allowed the Chargers to be a good team. Now, I think the Chargers did have some issues in terms of uh, how they, you know, built their teams and kind of who was put in charge, right? The Chargers had a uh, a person that was directly related to the owner of the team. They put that person in charge of, like, the coaching and those type of things. Tom Telesco did not hire Brandon Staley. And I'm sure if Tom Telesco, it was his decision, would not have ultimately made that decision. And uh, I don't know if Antonio Pierce was Tom Telesco's hire either, to be honest. But uh, I think... A general manager like Tom Telesco with the Chargers didn't have the opportunity to put his own coaching staff in. And let's be honest, if Andy Reid was with the Los Angeles Chargers for the last five years, for the last year, five years that Tom Telesco was there, Andy Reid would have gotten that team into the playoffs, potentially gotten into a Super Bowl, because that's the caliber of coach that Andy Reid is. And you got to have a coach to win, right? That's what I'm all, you know, all I'm trying to tell you guys is you got to have a good coach to win. Brandon Staley was not that guy, and I think that's not on Tom Telesco. I think Telesco, in his role, did a good job for the Chargers. Now, they also said one other thing. They said the Raiders' uh, traditional choices in this category, like Washington and Arizona, have improved or appear headed in a good direction. Uh, Vegas keeps making changes and now finds itself with an apparent quarterback of the future or legitimate starter, or they, they don't have that, uh, when it needed following one last season. So the Raiders, they're saying, are headed in the right direction, or at least it seems like that. And I agree with that. I think the Raiders roster today is a lot better than some of the other rosters around the league, but we don't have a quarterback or at least one that we're a hundred percent short is the guy. I'm confident that Gardner Minshew is going to be a good quarterback, but I can't be confident about the coaching. I can't be confident about the turnovers, right? That's always going to be questionable. And we also don't know how many turnovers the Raiders defense will force, right? And that's another part of it, right? The Raiders defense, should be legit, should be a top five defense, but it's not guaranteed, right? They got to go out there and actually put it out on the field, right? Paper is one thing, field tape is another thing. So we'll see what ends up happening, but I'm actually excited for the Raiders. Some NFL agents might not be, right? Maybe Mark Davis is a little, you know, hiring people, firing people without giving them an opportunity. I don't know, right? I feel like Mark Davis gave John Gruden a number of years. I feel like he gave uh, uh, Reggie McKenzie a number of years. I felt like the only one he didn't really give a number of years to was Dave Ziegler and Josh McDaniels. And I think that you had to do based off of what happened at that point. Um, but I wouldn't think that Mark Davis is going to just fire Tom Telesco in a year, right? I think Tom Telesco is going to be here for like 10 years, right? Like I wouldn't be surprised if, if Tom Telesco has at least like five or six years, right? We'll see what ends up happening, man. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Very, very excited for the Las Vegas Raiders season. So it's right there, man. Uh, I'm excited, man. Thumbs up, subscribe, and I will see you guys next time with another video.